Hi, folks. Welcome to another episode of Film Study. This is Ken McCusick. We're here to talk about something different today than that one play. We're going to talk about new rules proposals that will be voted at at the uh, ownership meetings this week. Uh, got some interesting new rules, not any groundbreaking stuff, and I don't think any groundbreaking stuff that's going to get passed this year. But I uh, thought we'd go through these uh, one by one in terms of what was proposed, get an idea of, of who's proposing these things, who might vote for it, who might not. And joining me to do that is Alec Pulianis. Alec, how are you doing? Doing well, Ken. This is a really cool idea. I'm glad that you reached out to me to do it. Uh, I had a lot of fun reading through it. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely some interesting stuff. And uh, NFL Communications does a good job of summarizing these and putting these out for us. So I I, I do appreciate that as well. Uh, Alec, tell folks where they can talk football with you online. Let's do that first. Sure. You can find us on Twitter at OneWinningPod and OneWinningPod.com with our podcast. Um, we're going to start digging into the draft soon. All right, very good. And Alec will be on for a draft show, and I we hope certainly on draft night to do the uh, uh, trade analysis that he's done in the past before. Hopefully. I It'll be a really late night for me, but I hope to be able to log on. <laughs> uh, all right, very good. So let's talk uh, 2023 playing rule proposals. So there are in total 17 of these, some more important than others, and we will be whipping through some of these that don't matter nearly as much, including – Number one, it's a, the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles propose to permit the, permit the use of zero as a jersey number and allow kickers and punters to use any jersey numbers between zero and 49 and 90 and 99. Yep. Great. <laughs> critical critical rule there. I, I love this. On, on each one of these, they've got an effect and a reason. And <laughs> the reason is flexibility in assigning jersey numbers. Uh, I, I, I think it's important to note that 24 out of 32 have to approve this. So the Eagles may have to buy a few drinks to get some of these things approved. But I wouldn't see a problem a- allowing this to happen. And the kind of team that might say no to it would be a team that had Jim Otto in the past say, and they don't want some of this stuff violated. They don't want yeah. you know have additional numbers, zero, double zero or whatever. Uh, included. So I, I, it's an interesting choice, but I uh, don't know if it'll make it or not. Yeah. I mean, I've always disliked the the number changes that happen. Just hard to tell who's who on the field. Mm-hmm. And, um, but you know, if we're going to do it, just go all the way, you know, <laughs> why not? All right. Well, number two gets down to a really fundamental change. It would be a big change to the game, but it won't get approved. Or at least I don't believe it'll get approved. This is another one from the Eagles that amends uh, what happens in what would normally be an onside kick and would allow a team to maintain possession if they attempt a fourth and 20 instead from their own 20 yard line. Mm -hmm. Big change. It has been talked about before. Sometimes I've, I think I've heard it as fourth and 15 before, but fourth Mm -hmm. and 20 is an, is an interesting uh, uh, possibility. Certainly a, a fairly significant rule change in terms of making the games go down to the wire more it's, it's definitely one that favors the trailing team for sure um it's the reason is given is competitive equity and fan engagement what do you think of that one this is definitely the most saucy of them all and kind of reminds me of some of the xfl rules that we've seen and th- this is a very high variance play because it is a fourth and 20 from your 20 if you throw an incompletion the other team gets the ball at the 20 yard line uh, there are also a few other interesting notes in the uh, document where you had to be behind and you could only do it twice a game. So it's also, you couldn't really play keep away that way, which um, is like, if you're ahead and just trying to get further ahead, I so, I can't imagine any trying try, using this as a valid strategy to pay, play keep away seems unusual, if not impossible, but yeah, I wouldn't uh, recommend it, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but it's, but it is a, uh, it's a one-sided rule in the case of favoring the trailing rule, a trailing team, I've always said the balance of strategies favor the trailing team in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's generally true because expect points, additional points don't matter for the leader. They do for the trailing team. And so when you have a one-sided thing like this, they can judge if it's better than their chance of, of uh, converting fourth and 20 is better than their chance of recovering an onside kick, which for both most teams, it probably is by the way, Mm -hmm. you're probably talking about a 15% chance, 17% chance to make a fourth and 20. Uh, where it'd be, uh, you know, 5% or thereabouts to recover an onside kick. 
Yeah, agreed. I think it's definitely a lot higher. I think the hard part about it is it's also a higher risk play. Uh, so you're you're probably going to give up worse field position if you fail. Yeah, I, I I just I don't think field position matters. Is it would be my my point on, sure. the, uh, on the other that's side. That's a good point. Yeah. So it's you're 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 giving up. You're basically increasing your your chance to have a chance to win the game from five to fifteen <laughs> percent. How about that? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good point to put it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go. Let's go to number three here. This is the Los Angeles Chargers. Put this one in. Uh, make adjustment of the play clock following an instant replay reversal consistent with other timing rules. Fairly arcane, and obviously they probably have an axe to grind in this situation, although I don't know what that was. Yeah, I didn't, wasn't able to find it either. A couple of these definitely felt like uh, something went wrong last year, and they're just <laughs> like consistency of the game things. And I have a hard pro, like a hard time saying no to these things. I feel like the NFL should be a well-oiled machine, and if they find you know holes in their... Uh, you know, just a, I don't know. Uh, the way the game flows, that should be cleared up. Yeah, I I, I agree. But you you can definitely the team proposed rules, and so a lot of these we're going to get to are proposed by the competition committee separately. Mm-hmm. So the competition committee wants so those have a much better chance to go in. They they basically have passed the competition committee, and they're a, a, a subgroup of the teams in the league has already said we want to do this effectively. So there's a pretty good chance those ones will go through, but the but the uh, the individual team ones very often are axe to grind situations. The next one by Detroit um, expand the coaches challenge system to include personal fouls called on the field. So again, I don't know what particular play they're talking about. This has been something that's been proposed by Belichick in the past that mm-hmm. just make everything reviewable, include. Uh, uh, you know, personal fouls and pass interference calls and pass interference calls. They did have reviewable for a short period of time. Yep. Those are now again, not reviewable. Correct. Yep. We've been down this road before as a note I had. Um, I feel as though it's going to go the same way as the pass interference where even when <laughs> you know, you watch the replay and most people are like, Oh yeah, that's not pass interference. That was a clean play. They'll have take lock and be like, nah, we got it right. You know, they don't want to show weakness. And uh, I, I just, I think the top level problem is the officiating can be inconsistent and this is what they're trying to clear up. Um, what I find really interesting about this rule is that rule nine or no rule eight is like, basically if we can't get this one, this one is like a smaller subset of more plays to get reviewed. Um, so I don't know. We'll see how this goes. So Detroit wants all of it and the Rams want a little bit less. Yes. Yes. Uh, all right, so Detroit's next submission, and they made three in total, was to provide clubs more opportunities for a third challenge. Now, this is fairly arcane. Got a number of things going on here. Uh, one of them was that if one of the two teams commits a foul that prevents the next snap, they can no longer challenge the previous play. So a good example would be the intentional offsides play. We've seen three times now from Chuck Clark mm-hmm. as his time as the Ravens' defensive captain where he just lined up in the backfield or jumped off sides and intentionally gave a first down to the opponent. But that, that play would not have prevented a challenge of the previous play, nor, nor would a uh, um, uh, other certain fouls, that, that, uh, like a delay of game penalty, for example. Uh, they, they still allow for, for a challenge of, of that play. But uh, this is interesting. This they they want that spec- specifically carved out as something the non fouling team can challenge and the fouling team cannot. Yeah, I feel like there had to be an axe right here, right? <laughs> so, yes. uh, yeah, it's so random. But I I think the other thing that's interesting about this rule change is that if you had a single challenge right, yes. you'll get an extra challenge, which I think I don't hate uh, <laughs> because there's definitely a lot of challenges where they're quite close and. Um, I think there are reasonable challenges. They didn't go the other way. And the fact that, you know, I just want the game to be more correct. I honestly think like anything that we can do to review more high leverage plays um, and seamlessly to the game would be beneficial. If, if the, I'm okay if that, if there's a replay judge initiating that, but the, 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 the current rules make the first challenge a really critical point because if you fail your first challenge, you won't get three. You only have one more and then you have to be extra careful with that one. So you got to make sure you win your first challenge in the NFL as it, as it goes right now. And I think that that's actually helps 
a lot of plays that are fairly marginal in terms of value get not challenged, which I think is I think is generally a pretty good thing to just allow the game to continue without, you know, a, a two or three minute break. Yeah, that's definitely a good point. Is that your uh, trigger happiness on the first ones very <laughs> slow down? Um, but yeah, we'll see. I, I think uh, I find this unlikely to pass. Yes, I would. I would agree. I think it's unlikely to pass. Now, and again, it's a team related one. Number six, also the Lions uh, expands the replay officials jurisdiction to allow for consultation regarding to a penalty assignment. And I really would have to know what kind of acts they're grinding here on this one as well. Um, but this is an interesting one. I, I, this is a penalty assignment to a player. And on failed fourth down attempts, it would also impact. So uh, an interesting, uh, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong one. I'm on the wrong one. Yeah, I was was going to say. Yeah, so go go ahead. Your your comments on it. I mean, this is another like really weird one. The added line is a foul that has been called involving the position of a player or action at beyond or behind a specific distance from the line of scrimmage. Sure. (laughs) I, I I don't even really understand what they're they're trying to get at here. Um, they basically add another or to their statement about what kind of uh, areas the foul can be called on. Okay, and they've got uh, I, I'm I'm what I'm looking at has A through J in terms of individual elements they're looking at as being reviewable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's quite a lot. It's spot of the foul, the proper down, the game clock possession, completed intercepted pass. It would move challenges to be more like what basketball officials do. What we've grown very accustomed to, I think, during March Madness here, is seeing the officials go to the bench. I sorry, go to the yeah, go to the scorers table and put on the correct tenths of a second on the game clock and this sort of thing. But there are other there are other problems that occur with spotting the football that can be kind of significant. And if there is one other set of eyes working on that, I think that's generally a good thing. So looking at the, the, the set of, of ones that are proposed by teams, I actually think this is probably the, the best chance to pass and get a 75% vote that, that, that mm-hmm. if, you know, having an eye in the sky that basically says you got the spot of the ball wrong. Uh, there was a famous one in Ravens history. It's actually happened more than once that the, the ball, uh, football has been spotted incorrectly after a blocked field goal in a Ravens game. Mm -hmm. Uh, if a field goes blocked within three yards of the line of scrimmage and it goes out of bounds without touching a second player, it's actually returned to the spot of the kick. Uh, and, uh, that's something that was, that has not been done correctly, at least twice in Ravens history. Uh, and, and I would love to, uh, you know, to see a, 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 an on the ball eye in the sky official, or even a New York or whatever it might be, uh, say you got the spot wrong. That should be, you know, back at the spot of the kick, or that should be wherever it is, depending on the type of infraction. Right. Okay. So now I understand better. Basically, this is a line of scrimmage consultation, which I think they already do. So maybe they're yeah. codifying it. Yeah. Spot of a lateral, that sort of thing is also included in this. So, th- so mm-hmm. if it's not in the final two minutes, they don't have to waste a challenge. You know, an eye in the sky could say, hey, that's a backwards pass or that's a forwards pass. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, no need to no need to challenge that play. Yep. All right. Um, we move on. That's it for Detroit. And there are three. Uh, Houston wants to expand the replays officials jurisdiction to allow review on failed fourth down attempts. This would be pretty broad. This would be a pretty significant cha- change, but it's also one that it's very difficult often to get good review evidence on. What do you think about mm-hmm. this one? Yeah, I think I like the idea of I, I think this is going to be somewhat rare. You'd have it, it has to be in a play where it's kind of goes back to the live scrimmage debate where it probably have failed because of just being short. And then the question is, will it be reviewed to change the spot? Because, you know, an incompletion, that's pretty clear. There's nothing to do there, right? Et cetera. The, uh, you know, what this would potentially look at and not cost a challenge for teams is the ability to look down from whatever cameras are there and get a better measurement of where the ball is or a better uh, spotting of the football from from that without having to use a challenge. But 
I what I find is that pile up plays on fourth down, particularly you know any kind of pile up run play where there's a, a reach involved, you can't tell from any camera angle anyway. I mm-hmm. mean, you, you just can't get a clear enough read on that. And there's other, I mean, the, one of the big ones is if there's a fumble that occurs where they cannot see the fumble, they can't mm-hmm. they can't change possession of the ball even if someone else comes out with it. Mm-hmm. So, so that'll that has occasionally come up. It came up in a 2006 game where the Ravens played the Titans. Uh, uh, interestingly enough, but anyway, that's it's a uh, it comes up from time to time. I would say uh, in the NFL. So this one, I think this one is probably not going to pass. I think they will they will uh, uh, need to uh, maybe maybe codify it differently or better before it's done. I just don't, or or you know the the other thing they haven't done in the NFL yet is really to use electronic um, elements of a football spotting and they've got it obviously for the you know accurate to within a couple inches i believe it is to on the on the uh it's, it's accurate to within 0.01 yards in their xy calculations oh. that they have for the by play so point point oh one yards is what a third of an inch roughly mm-hmm. yeah, yeah it's pretty so close. It, it would be they would they would typically be able to get it now that may not the orientation of the football may actually throw you off more than whatever marker is on the football which may be on the end maybe in the middle maybe whatever and the orientation of the football could still throw you off by more but anyway it's a it's a uh i think they need to do more with electronic tagging of the football before they go to something like this i guess with you know what would be interesting and the technology i'm sure i'm sure exists if if you can target weapons from 50 miles away you can certainly do this that if you had a <laughs> if you had a, um, a a tracker on each end of the football to the two points then you can predict every other point that's on the football yep so yeah. you you would lose the orient the orientation issue would go away for you yeah that's true yeah you know the curvature of the ball and all that good yeah. stuff so yep all right well let's go to number eight this is the rams and uh they want to make fouls for roughing the passer called on the field subject to replay assist or review by a coach's challenge now i'm surprised the ravens did not propose this one because the ravens seem to get beat by the by the rules on roughing the passer more than anybody uh Mm -hmm. and they had a couple really bad ones this last year i think this would be a good one i don't think there are enough teams pissed off about roughing the passer the way the ravens are defensively or that don't have a good quarterback they don't want to protect to, to right. have this past 75 percent yeah this is uh this is the one i would say is like the watered down version of number four uh because it, number four if it passes would include roughing the passer it's a good point but uh yeah this is like uh and now a special motorcycle weather report from progressive well, today you can expect lots of cloud cover with 0% chance of raining on your parade because you'll be riding your motorcycle vroom vroom. That rumbling low-pressure system beneath you should give way to a relaxing commute and the sudden urge to take the scenic route everywhere you go because, dang nabbit, you're having fun out there. That's your forecast. Back to you. This has been a special motorcycle weather report from Progressive, where every day's a beautiful day to ride with coverage from America's number one motorcycle insurer. Get a quote today and see what you could save. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. This is the smell of the leftover tuna fish sandwich you left in your lunchbox over the weekend in a wimpy trash bag. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy! Blech! And this is the smell of that same sandwich in a hefty, ultra-strong trash bag. Hefty, hefty, hefty! (sighs) Ah, smell the difference? Hefty Ultra Strong has Arm & Hammer with continuous odor control, so no matter what's inside your trash... Hmm. You can stay one step ahead of Stinky. And for bigger jobs, try the superior strength of hefty large black bags. Man, the roughing the passer kills me sometimes. I feel like a lot of times it's called, like you said, I mean, as a Ravens fan, we see these calls and you're you're like, there's nothing else they could have done. Like if you're trying to sack the quarterback, um, you know, you're just gonna get stuck. So I don't know. I would love to make it challengeable and maybe roll back some of those really bad ones, but I also don't see it passing. I, I, one of the things that would be difficult to do in terms of roughing the passer is one of the elements is if the player falls with his weight on the quarterback or intentionally drives the quarterback into the turf or that sort of thing. I think sometimes that's maybe knowable and other times it's not, but maybe if the, if, if the on field call included driving into the turf, it would not be reviewable. Mm-hmm. Because then you can do it and from any distance, you can end up driving the quarterback into the turf. And basically the the official is making their own call unreversible by saying that, which is not great, but but it, it could be a it could be a way to go. 
or you you uh, you run the risk that that you know you have a lot of half step and one step uh, personal roughing the passers called that that we as Ravens fans have traditionally been the victim of over the years. Yeah, for sure. I I'm not sure what, which way those will go. I feel like um, this is a this is one of those things that they want to keep ambiguous, mm-hmm. which is I think sad to say, but I think it's the kind of the truth. Yeah, I, I I would agree with you. I don't think it passes. Number nine is the Jets uh, want to expand the crackback prohibition to players who go in motion and go beyond the center to block. They have parenthetically split flow block uh, a defender below the waist. Here is what I believe they mean. So let's say you have a pulling player, a pulling guard. You then are, are a player who passes the center and you then – uh, work through your hole without finding your block yet. And you may conserve your momentum and head up field, or you may turn and look for a scraping player of some sort, usually a linebacker, perhaps also a line man might be more, more effective on a lineman. Um, and you might look to block him high, or you might look to cut him low at that point. And this is mm-hmm. saying basically that, that the jets want that ruled out. And again, I think this probably relates to some sort of an injury that they had last year, but I don't know who it was. Uh, uh, but that would be my guess. Right. And we were talking a little bit before the show because I was a little confused by this one that we think maybe the Ravens would not vote for this do uh, their right. uh, yeah blocking. Yeah, I mean, they with, with all the pull blocks the Ravens have, all the motion from Ricard, anytime that the, that the, the snap basically is in front of Ricard, then he's limited and he can't make a cut block heading back towards the football, which that I don't think the Ravens would go for that at all. There almost never be a time where Ricard would be making a cut block to the outside because anybody on the outside is going to be a smaller player. The larger players are going to be on the inside and, and there he might, or he might not really be looking to cut, but if it's a defensive lineman, that's where he'd be most likely to want to cut that player. And yeah, the Ravens would, would have no interest in this rule passing. And I think there's probably enough teams that would be in that situation that they would not want it, that it would not pass rather. All right, let's go on to number 10. This is now we start all the competition committee ones. The competition committee did the last eight. So as we mentioned earlier in the show, the, when the competition committee puts it out there, but better chance it passes. Yep. I like this first one though. <laughs> go ahead. So this one is uh, to change the definition of a launch to leaving one or both feet. And I just think this is glutton for confusion of steps and launching. Like, <laughs> I'm very curious what the difference is of a step versus launching if it's one step. Well, they probably have it defined right now as leaving both feet. And so they, they're saying they want it to be one or both now, mm-hmm. which is different. So they have someone has one foot on the ground. They can't be they can't be hit up with a launching penalty. But but now if they if they uh if they leave one foot, you can still launch. I, I assume that's what this means. Uh, right. This is obviously a player safety rule. It's proposed by the competition committee, so it wouldn't surprise me if it passes. But this is one of the ones I, I, I just don't know. This is one of those we'll wait till the end of the week and we'll hear uh, what they've approved. Yeah, I, I think I'm just confused what launching really means with one foot versus two. Like two feet, I can understand, but I don't know really how you can launch with one foot uh, still on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a pivot, if anything. <laughs> All right. Why don't you go through the competition committee once and introduce these and, and your sure. comments first? So number 12 is to make the penalty for illegal handing the ball forward consistent with other illegal acts, such as illegal forward pass, which, sure, why not? I, um, so this arose, <laughs> no doubt, out of somebody's individual problem who was on the competition committee. Right, and it was then brought forward. You know, that's what is one of the interesting things. The, the the Ravens, the Bengals, and the Steelers all have representation on a relatively small total competition committee. Like there might be twelve or fourteen in total, but three teams in the AFC North are represented. So each of them, in a way, excuse me, does not need to have their individual team make requests. They try and make proposals through the competition committee and see if they can mm-hmm. get them approved there first. And if they couldn't get them through the competition committee, which might have 14 teams there, they're probably not going to get them through the owners. So it doesn't make a lot of lot of sense to propose the thing individually. Right. That's a good point. 
I, I think you might have skipped over one, the tripping foul number eleven. Uh, oh my bad. Yeah, I was actually like about to read that one. So thanks for <laughs> calling me out on that. So uh, to make the penalty for tripping a personal foul. My thought is that we don't really have much of a tripping problem in the league and the penalty already results in 10 yards and a first down. So I don't really see this being super necessary. I also don't see it being that big of a difference if it is passed. So I, I guess one thing would be, it would be you could get thrown out of the game for it if it were flagrant and, and or, <clears throat> or if you did it twice in the same game would, would be something. So there's probably some particular team that doesn't want that. It is a fairly significant injury risk play usually happens when a lineman is down on the field for some reason. He's not being in good control of his legs, and he it rolls over. One of his legs swings up in the air and, uh, and, and catches somebody who then makes an awkward trip to the ground, and that can often result in it, – it, it can definitely result in some pretty significant injuries. So it's, it's one that, uh, you know, is, is – I, I wouldn't have a problem if it were a personal foul. I, I kind of look at it oh, the way high-sticking in hockey works – uh, a lot of things can happen to get your stick high in hockey, including your opponent whipping it into the air. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you got to have control over your own stick. That's the, it's one of the real basic rules. You can't you know risk hitting people in the chin in hockey. And and this is kind of the same thing with 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 your legs that you're doing uh, on uh, on a tripping play. So I wouldn't I, I wouldn't be opposed to this passing. I think it's probably got a pretty good chance um, mm-hmm. given what it is. I think I saw a few players do it last year too. I think they might have spurred it. Um, like a lineman falls down, they like flip their leg and trip the the ball carrier and stuff like that. So. Uh, While well, you introduce next this next one, I'll try and find out how many tripping calls there were last year. Okay, great. So the next one is to make the penalty for illegal punts, drop kicks, or place kicks consistent with other illegal acts, such as illegal forward passes. Um, this was one that I didn't realize was happening. <laughs> you know, I was like, I guess you need to codify it so people don't try to pull shenanigans, but like doesn't I feel like this doesn't even happen. This would never be called. I, I I'm trying to figure out what that could even be born of, but I was thinking right. Lamar punting the ball after out of frustration. <laughs> like legitimately is the only thing I could think of. Oh, I wonder that that could be that could be what they're talking about there. Uh but it's not like it's after the play, so it doesn't feel like a real thing. Um, this feels like a during the play, but yes. I, yeah, I don't know. I was confused by it. This is interesting because one of the things it's a little known rule in football is you're allowed to kick the ball from any spot on the field. If you're mm-hmm. if you're running free, breaking breaking the free for a touchdown, if you want to kick kick, then you want to if you want to drop kick and try and try and make a make a three point play, you can do all of that at any point in the field. It's one of the things the ball carrier is always allowed to do. Uh, it's interesting to me that this would this would be an illegal forward pass is is used as an analogy here, but I'm really trying to understand why this would be, you know, what this what this actually refers to in terms of a particular play somebody's got something stuck up their rear end about. Yeah, I know that after they pass the rules, there's usually videos to provide like the difference, like what what's been changed, kind of thing. I wanted a video to explain this in the first place because I'm confused by it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, and and it's it it probably does relate to one specific event that one team is upset about. Uh, what about uh, number fourteen, which would be a fairly significant rules change? Oh yeah, this is a big one. So this would put the ball at the receiving team's twenty-five yard line when a touchback occurs on a punt. Um, this is really interesting because it would uh, really change the calculus, I think, of the aggression of punts and also if they would want to go for it or not. Um, I, I don't like it one way or the other. I, I, I think it's interesting enough that I wouldn't be mad if it gets, it gets passed, but it definitely makes your punter more important. I think. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. You know, John Madden used to say, he always used to tell his return man. Um, you never, if the furthest back you'll take a fair catch is the eight yard line. And I feel like that would change if there's the risk of the ball coming out to the 25. You wouldn't you wouldn't fair catch at the eight anymore. You'd be, you'd, you'd you'd hope for the ball to roll into the end zone. It do, it definitely changes the, uh, the the strategy of of when you want to field a punt or not. Uh, really interesting. Indeed. 
the next one is to prevent the offense from benefiting by an extension of the half as a result of their foul. They go on to say in the, the transcript, like the idea of clean hands, um, like you can't um, benefit from a, your own penalty, like get a, a second chance. So um, I think that's that's fine. That makes sense. All right. Uh, I, I was trying to trying to find a point at which this could be done, but it's like illegal touching a kick, fair catch interference, a palpably unfair act, a personal foul or unsportsmanlike conduct. So there's a handful of different things that could, I guess, all potentially stop the clock that would not allow the period to be extended. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, go ahead. Okay, so this next one, I don't like it all, but it's to put the ball in play at the receiving team's 25-yard line if there's a fair catch on a free kick behind the receiving team's 25-yard line. I feel as though this completely ruins kick returns. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is this, why. Why are we even doing it? It's just like a formality. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm, I can't believe this got through the competition committee. Like there was enough people there who said, "Yeah, this is a good idea," mm -hmm. but there must be so much fear of injury on kickoffs that they want to kill pooching from the game because that's basically this is an anti-pooch measure. Mm -hmm. And I, what I feel like is maybe kind of like Congress or the Senate people all have their own political interests in trying to get their own rule change through the competition committee. And so in, in so doing, they promise to vote for some other people's one, knowing full well it won't pass at a full set of owners. I look at this, I say, there is no way in hell this passes with the full set of owners. In fact, this is, this is something that I think it would almost have to come about as a CBA change to make it be anything that the that the other uh that the, the teams and players would want to do and it'd almost be a chit the owners might use uh in that is to basically say instead of a instead of kicking off the the you can you can you can allow the kickoff kick goes in the end zone you get it to 25 or you start at the 20 automatically if you just want to take that instead which that might not be a reasonable unreasonable exchange by the way yeah, I think there's a lot of different ways they could approach trying to get the same player safety thing uh, resolved. I know the XFL has tried a new kickoff measure um, that you know decreases the impact and uh, the, the violence of it. So mm -hmm. I think there are other ways to do this that keep kicking, you know, kick returns in the game. But uh, yeah, I, I, I highly suspect this will fail. Yeah, this is this does not prevent squibbing. It doesn't prevent, you know, if you can cause the return man or the up back or whoever might be trying to field that ball to take a little bit more time fielding it and then get swarmed under. It doesn't 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 create safety on any of that. Doesn't create any safety for any of the coverage players as they get, uh, you know, driven to the ground or blocked at high speed. Uh, it's 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 just to, to me it doesn't uh, it it wouldn't it wouldn't cover all of the risks of kickoffs that they're hoping to cover and teams would find new ways to not have a, a kickoff fear caught and still have a chance to cover a, a pooch of their own, a poocher squib. Right. Uh, so the last one is to clarify use of the helmet against an opponent by removing the butt ram spear language from article eight and incorporating those actions into impermissible use of the helmet. Um, I just feel as though this is fine and I think the calls will be made the same way. So, yeah. So this, this, this one certainly might pass. It's just a language one. I, I don't think anyone, unless there's, there's some change that underlies this, that actually changed that changes the nature of what happens or the set of penalties involved. I, I wouldn't see why something like this, which is just a pure language clarification would fail. Right. Yeah, they, they move things. Like, that's the big difference. Like, if you look at it, like, parts get moved into the impermissible uses of the helmet rather than the unnecessary reference part. I I, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, just a little strange. They did have some bylaws proposals as well. We're not going to go over those in, those in this episode. Most of those are in terms of when's the claiming period. Uh, a lot of people wanted strength of victory as a higher tiebreaker. Uh, mm -hmm. in in terms of awarding contracts, uh, but anyway, there were there were various things that that, that are there. 
a little too arcane, frankly, for this show. But I thought uh, uh, you know some interesting stuff in there. There are a total of five of those, uh, which are bylaw proposals, two by teams, Detroit and Los Angeles, again getting their getting their rules and the Chargers, and and then three by the competition committee. Yeah, these are definitely all like pretty interesting. Um, curious if what gets passed. All right. All right. Well, this is the week. The, the meetings will occur. We'll we'll hear probably by the end of the week uh, what's happened in terms of these uh, these rules proposals. And the game of football will still look like football next year uh, with just a <laughs> with just a couple of uh, probably very minor changes in terms of of what's going on with penalties and review. Alec, I appreciate you coming on and talking about this with me. Uh, we really encourage people to listen to One Winning Pod. Give give Alex's uh, show a chance, and uh, uh, it's out there. About how many episodes are you putting out per week uh, this time of year? This time of year, we're doing may- maybe one episode a week or every every other week. Uh, we ha- we have a plan to ramp up for the the draft. Um, we're just keeping it light, um, figuring out exactly how we want to cover the draft this year. So, all right, yeah, all right, very good. Uh, other folks out there, if you'd like to be on a That One Play episode or any other idea you might have for a good short during this offseason, lots of opportunity, lots of time slots open. Hit me up with a DM on Twitter. They're always open. I'll get back to you very quickly, and we'll uh, set a time to record. Alec, thanks again for coming on. Thanks, Ken. And we'll talk to you next time on Film Study. Buena fiesta comienza con un buen outfit y tu próxima cita es con JCPenney, en donde encuentras de todo para cualquier ocasión. Ya sea elegante o casual, tenemos puro estilo para ti. Desde vestidos, trajes, colores y estampados de marcas como Liz Claiborne, Worthington, Stafford y J. Ferrar. ¡Ay, no olvidemos Thereabouts para los chiquitos! Descubre lo último en la tienda o en jcp.com. Estilo de pieza a cabeza para donde sea que vayas. JCPenney.